picked the wrong weight to quit sniffing glue. Send a coded message for Starfleet Commander, Priority One. Federation Science Vessel Grissom arriving, Genesis Planet, Mutara Sector to begin research. JTS to Bond Commanding. Hi, sir. Coding now. Everybody, welcome back. It is week two on the Grissom build, and um, we'll be wrapping this up pretty quickly, I'd imagine. First thing I did today was to take the decal sheet and take every decal that I won't be using out of the pile and leaving me with the decals I will be using. Now, um, having gone back and checked the, the, uh, the 4K, by the way, the 4K version of Search for Spock, the Grissom is um, almost barren of any markings. Uh, none of the stuff that you see in later iterations is there, which is why they have this nice note on the box that says decals from 22 to 31 are only used in the next generation. Uh, the most notably, the uh, uh, none of this striping on the uh, none of the striping on the pontoon is there. Only the red stripe back here is present. The uh, big uh, Delta Shield symbols are, are not here. As a matter of fact, on the uh, Grissom itself, I may have overdone this because uh, it's very plain on the Grissom, just as this is very plain on the Grissom. There's not a lot of striations and markings. This is, this is completely, uh, no, nah, this is no bueno. None of this is good for... Uh, the Grissom. Now it's fine if you're going to do Pegasus or something in the next gen, but that's not the mission statement. So uh, all those get left off, and we get left with some body decals like the things that go on the uh, pylons and uh, the set of the markings for the nacelles. But a lot of it is not needed. Uh, a lot of this isn't needed, and uh, which is nice because, uh, of course, none of th this isn't needed. The uh, the box. And, and, and I'm, I refuse, I'm not going to go back to my whining about the box, but the box is, does not show, even though I'm not using them, the box does not show the decal placement for the top of the nacelles. There are stripes and things that go on the top of the nacelles, but nowhere in the uh, box art do you see that. Um, you don't see any indications of where that's supposed to go, so who knows, one day in the future I may build the Pegasus version of this, or the Tiokoski, or one of the, and any of the myriad other ones, which will uh, warrant using the next gen decals. But for right now, and I can really see why uh, in future iterations, even though uh, uh, it was used in a motion picture and only there for a, a scant few minutes in the search for Spock but it was not not all that well you know jazzed up and I can see why they might want to jazz it up and add some more red piping and striping for the uh, subsequent appearances on television but uh, we're going to concentrate on what we need to do to finish this up today and the first thing to do is now that I know there are no decals for the body here for the for this area I can go ahead and glue it down to the uh, and I got this nice little foam carrier here to keep things upright. This is just a uh, insert that my uh, 3D resin comes in, bottles come in, but it happens to be in a nice right cradle size. So I can go ahead and glue this down and neaten up some, tidy up some wires. I did verify that there is a dark shape here that I need to paint on. There, it's, I've seen it before. I've seen it show up in other iterations. And I wanted to double check to make sure that it was there on the uh, Grissom before I uh, painted it because there, aren't, there is no decal for this. You have to paint this square on, this rectangle on. So I need to mask that off and paint it. And uh, then I can um, finish up the wiring. Let's see, finish up the wiring, then I can put the, two piece, the, the main pieces together and finish up the painting. So uh, yeah, we're, it's Monday. We'll probably be done with this. Uh, went by tomorrow or Wednesday notwithstanding what is going to happen to the stand so uh, let's get on with it all right I just got this uh, last rectangle painted in a little bit of gunmetal there and now we're ready to add this deck to here 
Well, here's a hell of a thing. Uh, my power just went out. Um, it's been a windy day. Probably a, a branch hit a, a line somewhere, but uh, I am out of power. And if I'm out of power, I can't do anything. So uh, uh, I think I'm going to run to the uh, Lowe's and pick up a see if I can pick up a uninterruptible power source because I was two hours into a seven hour print and the power went out and when that happens your 3D printer stops and it does not recover it's not one of those deals where it'll pick right back up where it starts again no it'll it'll fall it'll uh, zero out so I think I may uh, take an early lunch go uh, see if I can pick up a, an uninterruptible power source for it and uh, We'll be back to this whenever I've got power. Well, the power's back on, <laughs> obviously, or else you wouldn't be able to see what was going on. It was out for about an hour, but that was long enough for me to uh, run a couple of errands and get some lunch, so all is well that ends. Uh, I did have to restart my printer job, so uh, that was a bummer. I've got uh, jumper wires uh, uh, soldered in for these two circuits. All you need to do is join them, and then... Uh, Put some shrink wrap over all shrink wrap. My old retail days are coming back. Shrink tubing. Put the shrink tubing over the uh, uh, exposed wires and then flip it together. Well, it's all together. <laughs> we'll take the victories as we get them. It's all together. There is paint patching to be done aplenty, but not nearly as difficult as it would be to get all of this done and then start painting it. So. I still stand by the idea of painting it first but uh, no that wasn't pretty and it was, a, it was a matter of making sure that none of the wires were being pinched when we were putting the uh, the top deck on so uh, yeah I knew there was going to be spots like this that needed to be uh, repaired and repainted I just didn't know how extensive that was going to be so uh, uh, we're going to set this to the side now and uh, let that dry and, and we'll come back and figure out the plan of attack for the touch-ups well good morning everybody welcome back it is Tuesday and work is wrapping up on the uh, Grissom here the um, I've gone through and what I'm doing today is touching up the paint where my big fat gluey fingers got all over it yesterday or I smudged some paint as you can see I've got like another spot here that I need to take care of and uh, then we'll be ready to put the uh, gloss coat on so that we could put the decals down the uh, body decals of course the blue stripes that go here and things like that so uh, I'm just checking everything over giving it one last inspection to see what might need fixing before we go any further this was that big seam now there's still a seam there and it's kind of obvious but if you paint it I painted it white and I filled it in um, it's it's mostly gone but you know if you wanted to take the extra step you could have puttied that but that's going to be uh well actually no you i could have done that or much earlier as i say the step between the top and the bottom of the uh deck plate that's the one that's uh going to be the troublesome one uh, i'm going to check these for light leaks to see how bad that still is that cl those clear pieces those are the worst part if anything need, could have been redesigned, it could have been those pieces. I know, I understand the the mission that they have, but uh, I wish they had just been a smaller little clear piece there and then the majority of that not been made a clear piece. But let's see how the lights look. Have I got everything I need here? Uh, yes. We're going to take, we're going to do a... a uh, lighting passes or a light check and see how we're doing here the uh, problems with the clear inserts is probably the only noticeable thing yeah those windows look good strobes are all strobing yeah you know I could it's it's the area around these clear inserts here those are the problems everything else seems to be just fine and I'm still getting those double flashes. Only happening every once in a while. Yeah, it's like every fifth one. Three. Four. Yeah, 
Now I have to I have to qualify my uh, statement from yesterday. Uh, what I'm using is one of is one of Ralph's prototype boards, so it's possible that all the bugs weren't quite worked out. The ones that he sells now, I'm sure, are in great shape. It's the ones I was using were his prototype boards. So uh, there's one last bit of white here. I'm going to flip this over. So, do the last bit of touch-ups, and then we'll be ready for decaling. Alrighty, I've got the, uh, you may notice I've got the, the fancy cloth out. Well, this is because I was taking pictures for the instructions. Uh, and when you, and for as far as the painting tumbles, this is as far as you need to go. The rest of the, it's just decals, and you're on your own for that. So, um, what I'm going to do is let this dry a bit, and then uh, hit it with a, light coat of the uh, gloss really I don't need to only because there are so few decals that are going to go on here and the areas that are getting decaled are already at least a satin finish this is a temporary pole I won't be using it but uh, it's important now because it's got the wire running down through it uh, yeah I probably will let this dry for a bit and get the uh, Let's see the timing is, yeah, I'll let this dry for about half an hour more, spray it with the parts that are going to get decals with the, uh, the gloss spray, and then, um, or a sat satin spray, and then get ready to put the decals on this afternoon, at least the, uh, the uh, ship-wide decals, that is the blue stripes and all of that kind of stuff. The actual markings I might wait wait till later in the day righty I've spent a good amount of time getting the desk all cleaned off table is looking better than it has in months and I am got my uh, decaling accoutrements out let me get some paper towels I got some paper towels let me get some q-tips I've got uh, exacto I probably need to put a new sharp blade in and uh, we're going to start from the front and work our way back. There's just no other way around it. On the bottom, we have a, we have the red stripes. We have a registry. We have um, the blue line that goes all the way around the front edge. We've got the red stripe that goes down the belly of the pontoon. And then we'll turn it around and do the blue stripes on the back. We also have the uh, front of the uh, pylons. So let me get those out. Go ahead and cut all these apart. We are going to need one each of this one that will go on that side and then we'll need the opposite one for this side. So let's go ahead and get those ready to go. Okay and then all of these go towards the back so nothing uh, Nothing strange here. Everything looks good. I am going to check this decal though because um, it is something that I learned on the uh, the large, the very large Grissom is that this needs to sit right up against the edge there. Any any sort of carrier film that pushes that down is going to make it overhang at the top. So I want to check to see what the actual thickness of this decal is and I am just cutting it very close to the printed bits here and I want to see how that how thick that is oh okay we're gonna be good we're gonna be in good shape uh, the uh, the decal is a little bit thinner than this area so we're in good shape okay let's start putting down some decals okay those went on fairly painlessly those are the uh, the big registry ones there and of course the big one the money maker is this one right here so we're going to take our time we're going to determine where the center of this is because these bits overlap this back edge that should actually the blue should actually stop at the uh, first edge here so I don't know whether it's gonna be easier to do to line it up from the center and let it flop both ways or line it up from one edge and work it the whole way around so 
Gonna put it in the water, take me to the river, drop me in the water, as the decal says. So, uh, gonna let that sit for a while, get good and loose, and then do the applying. And when I come back, I'll either be very happy or I will be crying my eyes out. Okay, that front stripe was particularly painful. I will tell you, my advice to you is to cut it. Cut it in at least three places. I would cut it in the center, maybe uh, cut it into three pieces. I would maybe cut it in the center and cut it like there and there. Um, it also is a bit too wide, so I would trim the, the uh, carrier film right down to where the uh, pigment starts. As it is, I'm going to let this set up and dry and then once it dries I'll probably shave see if I could shave that top edge down where it's actually standing a little too a little tall of the uh, uh, edge of the piece so yeah that was not as quite as uh, uh, painless as I thought it was going to be now I'm going to take my own advice here and I'm going to when I do, to, to get ready to do the front of these pylons I am going to trim those down to the exact dimensions of the uh, the pigment on the decal and not have any carrier film whatsoever we'll see how these ones go okay while that first one is soaking I will make a note about the color I thought the color on these decal sheets was a little bit too intense but then you gotta realize that's the color of the uh, blue block on sitting on top of the blue paper these are not backed in white so what you've got is uh, going to shine through the uh, paint beneath it is going to show through. So it's also that's why it's very uh, a very good idea to make sure this is nice and clean and white or very light gray, so that the decal will shine the the best on it. I thought it was strange because there are some decals that are some parts of the decals that are um, backed in white. And uh, I, th I just assume if you're going to back one, one part of the sheet in white that you would do the whole sheet, but that's not how it is. Okay, let's see how this one's going to go. It's tough. Not only is it going on an angle, it's wrapping around the front of the pylons. And there is a penalty for using a very sharp X-Acto blade is that it wants to slice through it rather than just grab it and move with it so I have to be very careful and actually use the back of the X-Acto blade okay now that's laying down interestingly I think that's laying down okay but we're gonna have to wait to see it uh, how it dries to see if it'll actually physically wrap around the end of the the uh, edge of the pylon here whether I might have to cut some uh, darts in it because it is wider than the uh, kit part I am trying to make sure that the blue dark blue line is centered on the pylon There's an important note about the decals that go on the pylon edges. They're not as interchangeable as you think they are. I got sloppy. I got lazy. Don't, don't let that happen to you. They are two different lengths. So follow the numbers. The numbers won't lie to you. I thought I had got the... Uh, let me do this. I thought I had grabbed the front two matching sets no I had grabbed the front one and the back one by the time I had already gotten it out of the water and put it on the deep put it on the area I realized it was too short it was not fitting in here it was too short and that was because I had grabbed the uh, other uh, decal and the decal the ones that go on the backs are shorter than the ones that go on the fronts so uh, man I uh, should have paid attention. Should have paid better attention to, to that. But um, I am what I'm doing here on the ground here before I even put them in the water. Is I am cutting little darts in them 
just little slices out the side so that they will f lay over the edges. They are uh, wider than the section of the ship they go on so I'm hoping that as they dry they will wrap around the edges of the pylons. So we are progressing and uh, I had trouble with these on my large scale grissom. I mean it's just an odd area to, to uh to do the um, decaling on in the first place. It's an odd, you're, you're asked to paint that strip. It's just an odd shape. So this is the long decal that goes up front. So the area that I've got in the water is the other back decal. I had hoped to move from front to back. I did not have that uh, luxury. Okay, I'm tempted to run away screaming from these decals, but uh, since I've got one left, one left to do on the belly, I want to go ahead and get that down, and then we'll we'll let it go for as long as need be, maybe even the rest of the day, uh, or at least a few hours before I turn it over and do the ones on the top. Um, I still have the all of the nacelle sides to go, and then the cell markings to go. I still have the side of the pontoon to go, but I don't really want to do all of that. I'll go ahead and put this one on, and then we will call it a day on that for at least uh, at least a couple of hours so that these have a chance to dry in. They're just so delicate that any moving or jostling of the, uh, of the kit is going to end up bumping them loose. And I think the only real thing to do now is to let them seal in, dry, pucker up, do whatever they're going to do, and then maybe come through with a very sharp blade and just knock the top of the carrier film off where it is uh, sticking up. So we're going to let that go. The last one I can put on without uh, impinging on myself is this one here. So I'm going to put that one down. I'm really kind of scared about well, not scared because even the instructions say to cut this one off so that you're not trying to lay the whole thing down. But um, I want to make sure everything around it is good and dry before I put those down. Okay, the last one is down for the, for the time being. And I'm going to run away screaming. I think I'm going to go have myself a cold, cold tasty beverage because that took longer and was more nerve-wracking than it had any right to be. Um, as I said, these nacelle ones have to go on yet, and then these are the big troublesome ones that have to go on as well, but I do not want to put those on until all of this has had a chance to dry. If it takes another day, it takes another day. And back at the decaling, and surprisingly, this one went on wonderful. All I had to do was cut this off like the uh, like the uh, box said to do. Cut out a little bit of area there for the strobe, or for the formation light. And uh, fix, let me fix this. I bumped it while I was handling it. Straighten that back out. That looks good, and now I am trying. I am got to uh, put on this troublesome one on the side of the nacelle, and we'll see how that all works out. But then we're gonna let this whole side dry, and then flip it over and do the other one. That decal went down so well that I am gonna write that off as a complete success. That's the decal laying over top of the gray painted mask and. My dimensions seem to be matching it just wonderfully. So uh, we're going to do the, uh, I think what's smartest to do is to go ahead and do the same one on this side. And then when I flip the ship over, I can do the other ones and then match up the fronts. But uh, go ahead and get that other one done. Well, that one went on just as nicely as the first one, but I have to say, I am nervous. 
because I don't think those are going to meet in the center like they should. I don't know if that's the halfway point or not. I think that's a little, I think you're going to come up a little bit short. I hate to have to squeeze them to make them fit. Bring everybody back at it. It's Wednesday. We're finishing up the uh, Grissom this morning. Uh, good news, bad news. Good news is this decal went on like a champ. Bad news is, of course, as I suspected, they don't match in the center. They don't meet. Um, that's bad design. Sorry. I'll call it as I see it. That's bad design. That even if you gave a little extra that could be trimmed there, that would be uh, more uh, considerate. The thing is, you could say, oh, well, you need to slide everything up. Well, then if you do that, then you uh, are too short back here. This is where it is designed to end. And if you start there, everything matches up wonderfully. Of course, that's my painted shape underneath there. But then you get that. So uh, we'll let you know that this went on beautifully. This morning I put that on over top of the other decal. I was kind of worried about, you know, decaling on top of decaling. Whether it was going to pull the other one off, but it didn't. Last night I put these on. They settled down very nicely. And uh, now it's time to finish up the rest of them. I'm going to put this inside decal in the inside of this engine. And it also is not going to wrap around the front like it's supposed to. Right, so we are one decal shy of being done, and that is the registry that goes on this side. Um, I wanted to tell you that uh, uh, my uh, fears were confirmed, and these decals do not meet in the center. There's a little bit of a shortage there, a gap, if you will. Um, any of you aftermarket decal makers, there's your opportunity. Uh, I did reach out to people at round two uh, they are aware of it hopefully will be corrected on the next printing but for right now we just have to live with that gap in the front I may try to uh, I think that's about the shade of a pencil I may just pencil over top of that to try to join those together but we are one decal left uh, I wanted to give these guys a good chance to dry on this side before I put that down on there because I don't want to reactivate the uh, the decal um, and when I did the one on the other side I may have uh, well no I want it to, if you put it up that high yeah 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 it's just a troublesome thing because of where it needs to go but that's going to be the last decal and then we will get a flat coat on the whole thing. And then we're going to put it on the temporary stand. And I say temporary because uh, I am getting a new stand from Keith over at Cosmic Scale Models. But that is uh, not here yet. So uh, we're going to have to make do. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, all lit up and decaled and ready for action. Now I don't have the final base for it, so uh, but I'm not going to hold off the video until that happens. I'm just going to uh, make an addendum when, once that happens of the uh, actual base with a switch on it. So until then, this is the uh, 350 scale Oberth class with paint masks that I'm happy to say the first orders of which have already gone out or are going out as we speak but there you go there's all of the uh, the lighting and you know I actually got the uh, light blocking here taken care of it took many coats of black paint and with a gray coat over top of it to finish but uh, and I can still see a couple spots of red that I need to touch up but we'll revisit that once the base is on so here you go and I also need to put that last flat coat on but I'm not going to hold up the video for that so look how sharp those windows look that's just some very crisp styrene injection right there my friends well I bet you didn't expect to see me back so soon again uh, but that's where we're going to leave it for this week 
I've got it, like I said, I've got a base coming, but I really can't wait on that. When it comes in, I will do a special short video just about that. I think it's going to end up meriting its own, its own uh, topic anyway. So uh, here is where we're going to leave the tiny O birth class. Uh, you might even say premature O birth. That's uh, no, that's a bad joke. We won't make that one. Sorry. Um, a damn fine kit. I really like this kit. The more you get into it the neater it is for such, like I said, it's a B-list, it's a C-list kit, or a C-list ship. The kit is mm, top-notch, but the uh, the subject matter, it, it makes a fun, uh, it makes a fun addition. You put that right next to your refit. The same same universe, same generation-ish. Um, yeah, because you figure the time this is going out to Genesis Planet, the refit is being uh, returned to uh, space dock so they're in they're right in the same they overlap let's just say they overlap so uh you could sit this next to your refit with a point of pride uh again great kit from round two um and, and uh, uh deceptively uh fun to paint you, you, there's a lot more to it than you think there is now i will uh, I, I will still defend my grousing about the uh the decal placement information it's not the best i i think they maybe have gotten a little too clever with the uh doing the inside of the uh printed box for that that's great for the color uh, references for the paint colors and whatnot uh but i think somebody i think somebody could do a really nice in, uh, info sheet, just a PDF, put it online, you'll you'll get lots of fans for it, of the different versions of this ship and what decals should go on the different versions. Maybe it maybe the information is just a little too complex to be simplified for the box. If they could have added it to the instruction sheet, that would have been fine. Just a little thing that says, hey, uh, you know, Grissom gets X, gets one, two, three, four, whatever, and then the uh, Pegasus gets six, seven, eight, nine, and the Tchaikovsky gets seven, eight, nine, and th because there are so many different versions of the registries for it, it could be confusing as to which gets which uh, pennants and which get which uh, stripes. There are certainly ones that are universal across the board, and I have to commend the. Uh, the um, platy or the yeah the, the grid line decals. I'm careful here because my power cord is not connected. But the uh, the ones that go on the side of the nacelles, that is the best solution you c I could think of. If you aren't going to do, uh, if you aren't going to do uh, a three sided mold, that was a very good solution. I would carry it over to the top deck of you know, the fantail deck on the uh, pontoon. If you're going to create panel lines for that, I would be. I would consider uh, also doing that on the top of the fantail. Even though there are some engraved lines, I just think thematically, those the uh, the top fantail could stand to have that same type of detail called out. Again, if you're in the aftermarket business. There's, there's job one for you. Uh, I, as again, I, I uh, was able to communicate my uh, questions to round two about those front uh, decals, how they don't meet in the front. I think that's in good hands. We, I'm not going to worry about that again. Um, the way the light piping pieces go for the running of the strobes and the running of the formation lights, 90% of those are beautiful. The only two that fail are the ones that are on the back of the main deck that uh, light the markers, the green and red in the corners. I think rather than make that whole piece a, uh, a clear piece, if you could have cut that in half and just made that sliver over at the edge clear and made the rest of it opaque, light blocking would have been a whole lot easier on that. But those are minor quibbles. Minor quibbles in the scale, the grand scheme of things. Um, the decals themselves, good quality, good color, 
went on nicely. I still can't get over how, how clean and crisp those tiny, tiny windows are uh, are stamped out of that dome and the bottom dome. Um, I stress again, no window masks for this because you don't need window masks. I would paint those two pieces, get them completely done, and then just as you're finishing your final uh, construction, put the window inserts in. You don't need to worry about masking them. And even if you spray over top of them with a clear coat, what's it going to do? Fog them up a little bit? That actually helps. Um, the last thing I would say is, you know, those, uh, those problematic strobes or the green and red lights that are right by the docking uh, hanger decks, the ones that hang down, just be extra careful when you're light blocking those and you'll be fine. Uh, mine don't seem to have a, a bit of a problem at all now. And I don't, and I don't consider what I've put on there as you know a lot of different coats of paint, but um, I, you can get a pretty spanking good result out of this kit if you take your time and do what the instructions say. The only thing that you're kind of on your own is is in the decal placement, and that's all I'll say about that. So until uh, next week, this is Wednesday. I'm going to start on the. I'm going to start right in on the hawk tomorrow. And uh, we'll do a meet the parts. And uh, I want to get the the, um, the Hawk templates ready. The good news is the the uh, templates for the uh, Grissom are done. They're complete. And I've already got a couple of huge orders for them. So uh, they are going out this week. They should be showing up in your online shops uh, in the next week or so. So be on the lookout for that. Don't be afraid to, you know, drop a note saying you're on a waiting list or... You would like to be put on a waiting list. They, people like that. Uh, that lets them know what products are selling or what what there's a demand for. I know I'm talking and I'm and I am uh, uh, rambling at this point, but because I've only had three days on this week, I feel like I need to stretch it out, but I don't. So until next time, which will be two days from now, uh, you be good. You be good to yourself. Be good to each other. Uh, be good to a stranger, even if they aren't good to you. Be good to a stranger. It's good karma. Um, and uh, we'll see you here next time, which, like I said, will be very soon.